Hello, everybody. We got Sandra Walter in the house. Uh, I just want to say on behalf of everybody, uh, thank you for being uh, the voice of reason. Thank you for your service to humanity. And, uh, you know, talking to you, you know, over I guess probably the last couple of years, uh, and knowing where you came from and, and, you know, how you just continue to walk the walk, uh, you know, as an example, I think it was about 10 days ago, you know, with all this stuff going on in the external, <laughs> there's been a lot of uh, energies, you know, a lot of, a lot of bombs going off here and there. And, and, uh, I, and but I saw a post that you put up about 10 days ago and it was, and I can't recall all of it, but it was, it was just, it just was very grounding. Um, and I just wanted to ask you, I mean, like, I know you've got a human aspect. I've met with you. You're very real. You're just like you are right here. Do you ever get off balance? Like, do you ever get affected by the uh, external movie script that's happening anymore? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. I mean, we are a collective. Yeah, you feel it. It's just, I, I feel like the, the, the practices and the experience of the ascension process itself, you do get to a point where, yes, you're unwavering, but you're still going to feel the collective. Like even on the January 6th, it was just a lot of light workers, starseeds, uh, sensitive uh, people were like, Gah! you know, like just feeling um, the, the energetic flux of, of what was happening in the collective. And then, of course, if you're a precog at all, you're seeing like all of this stuff coming, what we're calling the, the revelation wave, you know, we're, we're in it, we're in the thick of it. And even um, a, a just uh, the 11th Monday, just yeah. a couple of days ago, strong influx just affect you know that magnetic storm and the plasma that hit and kind of shook you know the whole it was like a uh, Gaia's field was just going whoa 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 and uh, and it was an, a very intense um recoding restructuring energy um and i i was outside for hours in it just not, not just working with uh, with the gates to, to bring it in with as much ease and grace because we were forewarned that that, that was coming, but it's uh, but to kind of be in it and allow it to um, to integrate into your your personal life as well as the collective things that are going on. Yeah, of course, of course you're affected. Yeah. You know, everything goes, everything gets, all the plans go away when stuff like that happens. You know, and that's part of our training of being in the now and being in the present is to be able to stop the the hamster wheel and go yeah all right what's happening right now in this moment you know we've we've been trained for decades to do that but yes of course it affects you but yeah. it's how fast you can come back into coherence that's the mastery right yeah. it's like mm, okay and of course, I just posted a, a video from Ascension Path from quite a few years ago on truth and discernment because, wow, you could feel the collective just being kind of not um, triggered, but just kind of like collective, like, like it's almost like, um, gosh, it, it feels almost gelatinous when you feel into it, like collective thought form and collective emotion kind of going over here, going over there, you know, and we're getting trained where we're learning how to become creator incarnate in a pure way yeah. again so this whole truth thing and and um the ability to to not get um pulled into co-creating things that maybe you want to co-create or not want to co-create right you no know? because sometimes it creates more resistance and pushback you know you really have to look <clears throat> at the cosmic perspective for long game for yeah. for what's going on with all of this you know and and then apply that knowledge and wisdom to your personal life stream what's in the because we're we're leaving a, a type of free will let's say we're going into a divine will where uh free will you can do whatever you want to whoever you want 
is uh, is is fading away. We're getting into this this purified divine will as a collective experience. So the ability to manipulate and control as with a, a free will pass is fading away. Yeah. So now we're coming into this divine service to the whole and everything. And, and when we practice, you know, you go into your own life stream. How do I feel in this now moment? What do I need? What's in the highest service, you know, in order for me to show up as fully in my heart and as aligned as possible, what, what, what is um, necessary in this moment for me to do personally? You take personal responsibility for your own creation so that you can show up fully as a, as a co-creator of New Earth. Yeah, great answer, great answer. And it's interesting that you use the term long game because that's something that David Icke said. <laughs> Just oh, really? <laughs> And, and he said it the same way. He said, you know, you, you, you yeah. got to keep the long game in mind. Uh, and then went on to say some things very similar to what you just said. Uh, another thing that you mentioned, too, was uh, when we were talking that you'd kind of taken some time off or time to yourself. And it seems like that since I want to say maybe 1212, uh, there's been a there was like a lull, like a, a period where everybody kind of went quiet. And, and a lot of people that I was exposed to or interacted with talked about uh, they just had to be with themselves. Uh, it, do you see that continuing, uh, this uh, universal isolation that we put ourselves in for, for the good purposes, obviously? Do you see that continuing or do you see any type of change or expansion of some sort occurring uh, as we move into yeah. January, February? Well, it was kind of interesting, brother, because I... Uh, this is this is normal for me you know my my normal is i shut down between you know mid december to end of january is like this quiet period where i really go within do a lot of work with gaia a lot of work with the sun a lot of work with like the uh, my team you know and, and on my and on myself and that's when i receive and kind of get an overview for uh, for for what is ahead, you know, and I, I feel that can't be predicted. And I know we're getting away from all this energy reporting, predictive, blah, 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 you know, all that stuff is going away. But um, but for me, like the clarity doesn't come until we go through that gate, you know, through that passage. And it's not solstice. It's like the weeks before it is the weeks after. It's always been a very sacred time. And I want to honor it. And I want to be a true way shower and go, look, you don't have to like just keep you know busy 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 deliver deliver to, like chill and in and, and l allow yourself to be in that energy and to feel that energy and the other interesting thing about you know this whole 2020 thing with the the shutdowns and everything it was so we had 3 days of live Get a, a live gathering every morning in Sedona, Cathedral Rock. We had 50 to 60 people every morning for hours uh, on the 12th, 13th, and 14th. The 12 12 and the Sunday meditations, and then the eclipse. They all were like in the same window. So we, we we met and it was just people were coming from not just LA but Colorado and Montana and like all across the southwest and everything like people were just magnetized there and some people didn't even know why they were called they drove overnight they show up on Cathedral Rock like oh my gosh you know there's like 50 people sitting there they're like this is why spirit told me to come here you know kind of thing just like driving all night from LA like wild stories of course you know it always happens but when when I you know, when I felt into the not just the in, incredible things that happened, which I I won't share now because that just kind of belittles the experience, yeah. but um, but so beautiful to to gather because it's it's that's our reality, right? And I never thought in in all of all of my experience that getting people together would be viewed as an act of rebellion. 
you know, and, and that was, that was like, oh, wow, you know, and it's not, I'm, it's, it's not even, it's, it's weird to look at the, the division of perspectives, let's call mm. it, not division of worlds, but division of perspectives of how that would be seen. And I was just like, oh, okay, you know, it's interesting. I mean, people, people can say whatever they want, right? Yeah. They can say whatever they want. However, the energy that was anchored there and the experiences and the unfolding of holding this sacred space for starseeds to do what they're supposed to do in this now was an incredible honor, wow. an incredible honor, honestly, to uh, and to support people and watch and finally getting it into a space where um, there is, there's facilitation. Of course, I am showing up as a facilitator, calling everybody in. However, once the meditation is over, there was consistent activations, intentions. Let's do this. Let's do that. Like working with all these different aspects and people had codes that they had to deliver. And I feel like for the first time in a very long time, there was sacred space held where it, it wasn't like this weird kind of circus thing that happens sometimes when you get a lot of light workers just you know trying to herd cats kind of thing very different holding mastery that frequency the heart the openness the the genuine expression of namaste everyone really seeing each other in that light and showing up in the middle of all that um distortion you know in the external right. distortion going through whatever it's and showing up anyway right. and doing the work and incredible things you know that open that open for the whole uh passage that we're we're going through now and it did what it was supposed to do and i was just so honored to to be in that space um with all of those folks during That's that powerful. That's powerful. And you've, you've been, of course, you've been on this path a long, long time. Um, but I think I read something the other day. I'm pretty sure you've been doing the silent meditations for five years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Congratulations to that. Thank you. Uh, and, it, and, you know, for me, like, you know, and I've tuned in a few times uh, over the past few months. Um, and, you know, I, I don't have the experience, obviously, that you have. Um, you've been very diligent. Uh, but my question is, you know, in, in regard to telepathy, um, you know, you have a wealth of experience in, uh, in that field, uh, probably more than most by far. Uh, have you seen any type of graduation, uh, uh, you know, in the effect uh, of pulling together people telepathically through these silent meditations from around the world? Because I think the last time I talked to you, you had something like 7,000, 8,000 people were participating at this point. Yeah, I think we have more, actually, because we just had some larger groups join us from different hmm. um, different countries. You know, they're like, we have 1,000 people we're going to join. So, wow. and for those people who don't know, we Sunday Unity Meditations have been running for five years now and we do them three three sessions every sunday and it's global so it's a global mass meditation every sunday and the original intention the the direction was this is going to teach you how to unify without the inorganic technology without being online you're mm -hmm. going to learn how to feel and see and have shared experiences just by keeping this practice and the folks that have been doing this consistently, we do. We see each other, we feel each other, we see the same visions, we start feeling the same frequencies. And now that it's getting into a collective DNA experience, so we're actually working with collective DNA bringing in codes. So any of us that receive a uh, ascension code, it they seem to disseminate very very quickly through the Sunday unity meditations. So heart openings and clearings and, and again, this uh, comfort and support for this time where people can't be in the physical as often um, as they used to be. It's, it's amazing to me. It's beautiful to me that we've created this 
this experience, this shared experience. And then the telepathic thing, of course, that that too was demonstrated right on um, during the during the gatherings for Sedona. People are called in from all these different places and they show oh. up, they're like, oh, that's why. You know, or people that were like, I saw this group on Cathedral Rock in my mind's eye and here you are, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So oh, it's wow. working. And, and the cool part is now, now that we have this collective that has learned how to connect without the wires and without the Zoom and without, you know, without the schedule outside of, you know, here's a window where we can synchronize. Um, now we get to play with the next level of that, of co-creating shared experiences and really going into um, a refinement of that of that skill, which is our natural divine human birthright to be able to connect, to unify, to co-create, to be able to um, open each other's hearts, to have healing, collective healing, you know, because it's not one's, the one savior thing right, is right. out, you know? So now it's, okay, what if we all collectively focus on this and see what happens? You know, we get to play with it a little bit more, but you can see like the people who have been dedicated to it, showing up consistently with the open heart, doing the work again, we're seeing the difference in our group gatherings and the Sunday meditations, just everyone getting a little more refined. And it's also easier to um, deal with what's going on in the external. Yeah. When you have that collective, which we just got renamed the Crystalline Collective. So it's just the, this Crystalline Collective thing that's happening now is uh, it's about creation, not distraction. Right. Yeah. Which leads me to to the, the kind of almost like a little backtrack here, but I just wanted to get your, you know, your advice, your guidance, uh, you know, over especially over since November the 3rd, since the election. Um, there's been, uh, obviously, a lot of information and disinformation and a, a lot of stuff out there. Uh, and, and I do keep my eye on things just because of what I do. And, uh, and I know that there are times I get charged. I'm not too bad, but, you know, I just want to, like, shake people and say, wake up. It's all about us or whatever, whatever that might be for me. But <clears throat> my question is, it's, it, it's almost like, you know, especially over the last couple of weeks, People are on pins and needles, you know, uh, looking for the next fix, you know, and I'm not going to say that I'm, you know, uh, not susceptible to that. Uh, I'm just trying to look for, for a, a kind of a way, you know, from the human level to navigate this thing, uh, you know, and it may be a simple answer, uh, but how do we, you mentioned distraction. Uh, when does, when, is it, as simple as we've got to be honest with ourselves, we just need to stop looking for that external and just spend more time with ourselves. Or, I mean, you know, it's, it is seductive. It's, it's inducing. I mean, it's, it can pull you in. Uh, and I've watched it, you know, I, I, I really don't want to use this word, but kind of divide, uh, or I see division within uh, the light worker star seed circles and people take us in pretty strong positions. And, and I realize that we're all going to the same thing and we get charged and so on, but is there anything that you can kind of guide us with on how to deal with that? Uh, whether it be just to ignore it altogether or, uh, you know, or read every bit of it. Well, I don't think you can ignore it altogether. The thing is to not get, um, swayed off balance or judgmental about how it goes because ultimately i mean as i, I mean if, if people are familiar with my journey i mean i myself have been working on this for several years what what's about to unfold let's say no but there's there's no way in heck <laughs> that I'm going to like get online and start telling people what's really going down or anything like that. I'm like, mm, 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 mm. Mm -hmm. and the people who are tasked with playing that, you know, they represent this and we represent that. And this is real. That's real. It's not real. It's like, it's like they're, they're tasked with that in order, just like everything 
right now in order to get people to realize, you know, you get to feel either uh, uh, an extreme letdown or an extreme exhalation, or you get to feel whatever you want to feel. The thing is like, how does it affect your reality, your, your ability to stay in your heart? You know, all of that has been tested. And for a lot of people, the, it, it's, you, you can't, well, it's not really a test because then and that leads to duality, right? Pass or fail. It's just like, how did you deal? How did you deal with um, people being in conflict? You know, for, for me, I was like, I'm just going to let y'all deal with your the emotional constructs that are being thrown around or played with <laughs> during this time. Because I have I have my my own thing going on with all of this, and again I'm I'm playing long game with the whole thing. So in in a way, no matter what happens, um, you know, ascension is inevitable, and that's what I'm that's what I'm uh, I'm an ascension guide, right. right? So I focus on that. So no matter what happens to the collective, to politics, to government, to all that. I know, I feel, I know in my heart, it's all going in the direction of good, right? right? Even if it looks ridiculous, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> even if it looks insane. So it is, you know, there, there was, we, we always call forth as much ease and grace as possible. However, things, uh, when you're shifting and it, you're destroying an entire reality, you're dismantling an entire reality structure and all the reverberations and the cause and the core and the, ref the record and the effect and all memory of it is being purged from these realities. And it's, it may not be uh, easy and it's certainly not going to happen in a day, a week or whatever. You know, that's why we call it a process. However, when it comes to the, your attention being pulled in, you're going to feel it. Programs, you feel, right? You're going to make sure that you stay in tune with your heart. Because if you're feeling like, oh, I'll just check one more time. Oh, mm -hmm. I'll just see well, one more message. Just one more thing. Blah, 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 blah. And it's beautiful, you know, in it's, I mean, it's, it's awful. The censorship is awful, but in a way, it kind of got people to back away yeah. from the social media a little bit, which is, you know, there's always the the good side to everything, right? So, um, so, th so that's definitely um, mm -hmm. helpful because the thing that is happening with this revelation wave must be felt and interpreted by each individual expression of source mm -hmm. in its own way. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you get to choose your personal experience, but remember that the collective experience of unity consciousness is inevitable. And the sooner we can get to all of us working together to resolve our issues, the better. And I know people tend to think and feel that way showers, light workers, star seeds, we're here to be the ones to lead the way, right? And you put this, you put this crown and this gold star on, um, you know, as if we are ordained to be the ones. And then things like 2020 happened and the political things happen and, and you see like, mm, maybe that isn't true. <laughs> 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 you know, like, I don't you know, know. I'm the like, you know, it's like you gotta look at your brothers and sisters and go, what what what's going on there what's going on there and immediately forgive have gratitude Ooh, i've had intense days of overwhelming gratitude and forgiveness and joy for all the people that wanted to slash and burn me last year mm. and probably still do mm. and i'm just you know for me that's like whatever i understand we are all one thing you know so you get to show me parts of me that that you know whatever my fears may have been or whatever just just really dissolving a lot faster and then it's not that you get um 
tougher, not growing a thicker skin or anything like that. It's just, I really feel this Christed heart going, yeah. all is well. I love you. Thank you. I love you. Thank you. I just consistently. And because of that practice, I do. I have, you know, there was one morning last week I woke up and I was in such gratitude for trolls and, and people who were so cruel and venomous and just spraying all kinds of vitriol, you know, through the, the community. I was like, thank you. We really needed that, yeah. you know, because I needed to see how in my heart I am, yeah. you know, and how quickly I can get to forgiveness and gratitude no matter what. And, you know, it's mm. it's beautiful because it, it like infiltrated the family, you know, the starseed lightworker family, yeah. you know, that that thing that used to divide like normal people, you know, sleep people. <laughs> Yeah, you know, still part of us, but used to be like over there. We're like, oh no, we're yeah. high vibe, you know, and then it got into the high. It was great. Yeah. I think we're all on the same playing level playing field now. But you know, the other side of that is, uh, and maybe it has something to do with this lull in December, this this uh, isolation, turtle in the shell kind of frequency that a lot of people uh, had talked about and experienced. But uh, the other side of it is, you know, and I, I'll just speak from my perspective, but. And some of the people I've talked to and I've experienced uh, has been like um, a ramping up of the team. Like the room is filling up with more and more beings. Now I've had for the last three or four weeks and it started with a, uh, uh, an experience Morgan had one night I didn't sleep in the bed. Uh, I didn't go to bed with her and we didn't connect as we usually do. She um, opened her eyes and found she was, in a sh uh, she was on a ship and so the next night when we laid down, I connected and immediately was there. And, uh, and since then, there's been, uh, of course, this uh, increasing uh, <laughs> frequency of, of, of energy or entities or aspects or however you want to determine that. Um, and in particular for me, and I've talked to some people and they've actually uh, had similar experiences. They've been some tall blue beings. I don't really even know if they were, you know, I don't know what it were galactic starts and light beings stop, you know, I don't know, but, but yeah. So my, my, my point is, and my question is in your experience or what you've been observing with others, uh, are you sensing like this, what I'm talking about, like this, there, there's more people coming, more of our aspects uh, coming to the party uh, as the distortion increases the other side of it, the inverse of it also is increasing. Are you experiencing that? Yes. And there's, and, and I asked too, because especially in like the last week and a half or so, hmm. just the, the room is crowded, you know? And I'm like, all right, there are, I was like, all right, well, what is going on? Because some, because a, a lot of the beings were getting so physical, you know, yes. eyes open, just like, are we there where you're just going to like, like get full on physical with this? Because I never felt that they were going to get physical like this, yeah. you know? And I was like, wow, you're getting really close yeah. that I could see like all of you normally, you know, you just see sparkly fields and features and maybe a costume or something like that. But they, it's never all there like hard, you know? And, uh, but it's been changing. Yeah. And, uh, and I asked, I was like, what? Okay, what is going on? And there's uh, first the the magnetics are completely changing, so the veils, which are self-imposed, are starting to dissolve in a in a very different way, and this of course causes the the revelation, right? So this revelation wave has been like, look, veils are going to lift on realities, right? So we've always we've always been surrounded. So it, it feels like now um, and again, you know, lifting veils on your heart. So your your Christed diamond shining heart center starts uh, creating that frequency around your field and beings who resonate with that. You know, we're not talking about like ghosts and goblins kind of thing. We're talking about like high level beings. Right. The stuff I saw during the eclipse, I was just. I've, I've still um, 
blown when, away. When was the eclipse? Was that December? Or uh, was one? December 14th. Okay, that's right. So, yeah, uh, I, I'm still... I'm still processing that experience, <laughs> but because it was just hu huge beings um, there, but and so many people could see them it was really incredible. But but again, your frequency is different. Your your revelation of the self, the true self. So your Christed frequency is now creating a field where now you've got that vibrational match. So you're seeing more of those high level level beings than ever before. Plus, they are more comfortable in your presence, right? Because you're maintaining that. There's not the, I'm on, I'm off, I'm on, I'm right, off. You're right. on, 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 on. And that allows, there's trust, there's code exchange, there's a vibrational match. There's a lot of that going on. And then of course, collectively, you know, if you want to think of the Christed frequency or the plasma that's coming in right now um, is, is again, it's it's revelation. It's, that's why they call it the revelation wave. It's revealing all this stuff and not just relationships and who's doing what and pulling back the curtains and all of that stuff, but it's it's revealing this unity consciousness in a way that we are not familiar with. We have had definitions and concepts around what unity consciousness is and everything that I'm receiving about 2021 and all of this stuff coming in is that we are going to reveal and, and be exposed to what unity consciousness really is. That's the first thing I'm going to talk about when I come back. It's just like that we have not even scratched the surface of what unity consciousness truly is or what it's truly capable of. We can talk about I am, we can talk about being source and all these different fractalized forms and everything. But there is something completely different happening in this universe. You know, when people talk about harmonic universes and going into a different harmonic, totally different experience, right? And for, for those of us who have just taken on those codes, taken on that work, you know, you're, you're ready. You're ready for that experience. So you're starting to get these very different beings. Yeah. And, uh, and again, like, like you, it's very crowded. Yeah. It's very crowded, and not only that, but it's it's crowded during the day. It's crowded in the morning. It's crowded in the. E it's constant. It's constant, and I'm I'm very grateful for this um, this time. Yeah. You know, just kind of stepping back and everything, and getting a lot of creative work done. But there's also like, wow, this is really beautiful because you know, this kind of rolling into. I was just kind of thinking about contact. You know, there were some things that kind of happened with um, the Disclosure Tribe uh, that I was kind of feeling into, to, and got it interesting, you know, revelation, here we go, you know, more, mm -hmm. more things being exposed. But the way that we were treating it, and I'm going to include myself in that conversation just because energetically I was holding a container for that whole thing, like through for, for the last God, over a year. So the way that that we deal with issues and i may have this may have been the the quote on my facebook page that, that i put out because i was like okay the, the way that we deal with things we need to deal with things as a collective not as this he said she said two sides this is right this wrong you know using your discernment or whatever but when things happen as a light worker or star seed whatever you want to call us the folks who woke up first and embraced spirit as your primary thing hmm. right your primary thing was to experience god in form christed crystalline consciousness right those people as a as a as a collective are, are well, you know, we're going to have to learn how to, how to be way showers about how we deal with conflict or different um, interests or opinions or beliefs within our own collective as a, as a template, as a way to, to, um, to be able to not teach others, but to show possibly uh, other groups and people who are starting to awaken 
having difficulties with each other, family or whatever, how to deal with things from the state of unity consciousness in the highest interests of all concerned, in the highest interests of service to the whole, which is that divine free will uh, that we were mentioning earlier. Yeah. Going into, okay, how do, how do we self-correct? How do we self-correct issues within the organism of our, our awakened collective? And, and that too, I feel like there were many, there continue to be many lessons and many revelations as far as belief systems and side choosing and getting so entangled with uh, uh, politics and global agendas yeah. and things yeah. like that. Kind of like, I thought we were the ones who were supposed to show the way and discover and implement new ways of resolving issues and not my way is right and your way right. is wrong right but conversation and communication that comes truly from the, the heart table right from yeah. the galactic round table we're all in this together and we all want different things how do we how do we balance this how do we stabilize this so it doesn't knock people into duality again yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it totally makes sense. And it makes me feel a little better, too, because uh, I had a conversation with these beings. And I'm glad you said what you said about the physical part, because that's what they were telling me. They said, we're going to become more and more and more visible. Uh, and I was like, really? And, you know, and part of me was like, OK, let's do it now. And they're like, no, you're not ready for it. Uh, but as you remove your fears, you know, these fears of, of the unknown or, or these types of things happening, it'll come more and more to play and you'll be able to, you being, I guess, anybody, be able to uh, be in a conscious awakened state and have conversations that may be occurring in, let's say, dream state or in dimension or when we're in a meditative state uh, so that the information and the code will, I guess, um, you know, transmit uh, much quicker and with a lot more clarity. So it was actually uh, similar to what you were talking about a minute ago. Uh, but but now that you talk about this, I'm kind of seeing the energy behind it, which is although it's an occurrence that that you know on the surface doesn't. Oh, what is that? How does that uh, connect to the politics and this and that? But it's almost like a, a hard and fast metaphor, or energetic uh, symbol that this this presence is going to continue to expand and by virtue of that it's going to well it has to alter it will alter the field of whoever's experiencing it so right uh, yeah it's right. Uh, we can we can see the reflection through the realms right through all the different realities of different interpretations of an energy of an experience of one thing becoming many different things right whether it's personal or collective or global this or whatever the dismantling is the dismantling is the dismantling whether it's within your own life stream or within the, the globe within the solar system of the galaxy for for a lot of things you know it's all it's galact it's galactic as well you know it's not we're so gaia focused sometimes we forget yeah. that this is a reflection of what's happening on a much larger scale. Yeah. But if there's anything that I can offer people, because people are like, what do we do? What's going to happen? No matter what occurs, no matter what occurs. And I know a lot of you are psychic and tapped in. And even when you feel that, knowingness like what i'm being told feels right what i'm being told i know is true even if it doesn't unfold in the way that you think it's going to unfold even if you think things are going to happen and they don't happen there is there's a a, a level of um stability and balance and faith and trust that we can carry and broadcast through the entire collective because for those of you who are psychic 
you know that, that there are going to be ripples and fallout and confusion. But this is not the time to run around Henny Penny and create any more, um, you know, not fuel that fire at all. As I always say, don't watch it burn, get on with creating the new. And the new is that stability, that knowing, that unwavering faith in the good, no matter folds, the inevitable conclusion, you know it, you see it, is is positive, is mm -hmm. ascension, right? Yeah. And it doesn't matter whether it takes 10 days or 10 years, yeah. right? Right. We right. are. We are one. I am, right? Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. the best, highest advice I can give in yeah, this moment without yeah, speaking. Thank you for that. And <laughs> another uh you know another thing that's occurring or seems to be occurring i, I think a lot of people use the term pre cog earlier you know a lot of people that get that kind of information if you go back five six seven eight years people talked about essentially the time that we're in now and that there would be um an acceleration of people physically transitioning from the planet and I've noticed this, you know, as the years gone by, and certainly over the last few weeks, by different means too, not necessarily anything that's uh, associated with COVID, you know, specifically, uh, but more and more people transitioning physically, uh, if that occurs or if that's occurring, would seem to have the same type of impact of alteration to the field that, you know, these visitations that we were talking about are seeing the aspects and more of a physicality. Do you do you uh, see that type of thing occurring? And again, yes, understanding that everything is perfect, everything is going to work, is working out. So, on, like you said, ten days or ten years. But do you see that happening? Um, you feel that's something that's going to continue to occur, where more people are physically transition. Yes. And and by the same token. Uh, in terms of what you were talking about, the veils and the, I think you said the electromagnetic and, and the such um, being part of that uh, more physical experience with these other aspects. Do you, do you feel that the, those that have transitioned, will transition, will also become visible in our field? I don't mean necessarily like a ghost or anything, but just their presence, their energy, uh, the ability to co-create and collaborate with them as well? Uh, that I wouldn't, I wouldn't blanket that as like, oh, yes, everyone who transitions is then working with us from the other side, because a lot of people <clears throat> going all the way back to source, right, done, right? right, some people going back to where they came from, if they're, you know, star visitors, things like that, going a lot of people um, getting uh, um I don't want to sound ju judgmental, but um, for those who have, are just um, carrying weight, they just got too distorted, yeah. kind of going to, I don't know, there's some kind of strange thing happening where there's, um, it's almost like a soul rehab center kind of thing, you know, <laughs> not a physical thing, but there's there's definitely something happen happening with um, a purification wow. of souls and for some that were kind of playing the role of bad guy or whatever had that agreement you know that that right. creates a lot of distortion in the soul and the soul group and everything so there's a lot of a lot of cleanup there so i wouldn't necessarily anticipate those folks hanging around in any kind of right up, upper astral visitation kind of realm at all job done um, yeah. and then and then a lot of folks moving on to uh uh, higher realities yeah. you know dropping the body and going to higher realities it's not guaranteed so don't drop your body trying to get there folks but um, because we know you need as much of that higher consciousness in the physical as possible right now in order to create what we're supposed to create so yeah. stick around <laughs> darling I'm staying, I'm staying. I'm saying at least 1,500 years. I'm saying. I want to see this thing through. Too exciting now. I know it is. Yeah. We, we came all this way. and didn't come all this way for, uh, to stop now. Yeah. At least some of us. 
uh, another thing that happened, you mentioned Gaia uh, earlier. And yeah, of course, understanding this is far beyond an Earth ascension. Um, but uh, a, two, a couple of weeks ago during this period, I had a, a huge um, experience with Gaia like I'd never had before. And I, I consider myself to be very, very organic. I mean, this is my own inner knowing of being here from the conception of the planet um, in some regard uh, and working my way up from the soil to the, you know, whatever. But uh, it was very intense and it seemed like, uh, I don't know, I've never had that experience. And, and I know it's not unique to me. It had to be out in the field, but it was, it was almost like a, a burst uh, I don't want to say a rebirth, but like a burst of a higher frequency, uh, almost like the, the shoe came down, you know, boom. And uh, it was the, the word that I think jumps out for me the most is liberation. Yes. Does that, does it resonate with you? Okay. I just, yes, yes. It. You have your, even, um, you know, during our gatherings and having people put their hands on the ground and like really feel what's really going on right because gaia will not lie to you so when she says i'm going to reveal everything you know it's that kind of yeah. it's it's self you know it's self-revelation she's fully supporting that and we have to remember that that gaia is receiving through all these all the gateways and the influxes and everything that's going on and all the conduits that are anchoring in those frequencies she has received everything. She received everything that she needed to create those ascended realms, those crystalline realms. So as the, the lower realms collapse and the higher realms start taking over, you're going to get more of that living library thing where it gives everything that you are back, right? Yeah. Your DNA just lights up with the records of everything that you are. Yeah. Like um, quite a few sisters, um, we've got you know, s sisters in Sedona that have been playing with this and we're playing with it extensively in December when we're all together of receiving these codexes and the living library and just every everything uh, coming coming forth in a clear way and being taken to these like beautiful, um, you know, etheric temples and ancient structures and like just all this, this, um beautiful again this unified unified visions and things and just playing with that and going and just in the experience going oh, everything is here everything yeah. is just being laid at our feet she's like what what do you want yeah. i've got everything you need yeah. everything right and when you look at the the external distraction again more creation than distraction when when if you're caught in the fray of the distraction a little too much you'll you might lose that compass yeah. that um won't allow you to yeah. to connect with gaia in that way you know yeah. because there's all those programs telling you gaia is one thing and she's not she's no. so so yeah. much more and we are that that's the other thing you know yeah. that it's a co-creation so you're starting to feel more of you and Gaia as, you know, that representation of Divine Mother is just going, come here, baby. I know. I, it, was, it was so intense. I had to ask her. I said, was I born here? <laughs> I said, did I originate here? I thought, I would, you know, I've always gotten into I came from, but it was so intense, mm -hmm. literally, that uh, I was in the, I don't know what you would call it, like, almost like a plasma or molten lava type of viscosity. And, and it, and it was like, well, this is how it started. And you've been here since it started, you know, and, but it, it, that's just a, uh, an example because it's what you were talking about. There was just like a massive influx of code that would take me, you know, I don't know how many thousands of years to go through, but yeah, I, I just wondered if that was another thing that might be, resonant or occurred with other people as well yeah because it has been anchored into the collective you know both the solar flashing rewrite of your beingness and this gaia reveal unlocking all that you are just it's it works together mm -hmm. right so all of a sudden you're getting this again that that complete renewal rebirthing the caves of creation themselves 
have been purified. So the, the you know the caves of creation are actual physical thing within Gaia. However, all all the etheric influence, all it's gone. You know, there's just freedom again. Freedom codes for all, for a year and a half now, permeating all of these things, and it's it's going to happen. The freedom is going to happen. Yeah. No, yeah. and it's not something you wait for. It's something we co-create Create. with yeah. the energies that are there, fully supporting it. Yeah. Love it. Wow. Um, I don't know. I don't want to put you on the spot, but um, put me on the spot. <laughs> I just I can... know the power of the spontaneous, and I just wanted to ask you if you take us through a meditation or a, oh, yeah. something. Uh, well, you know, as as we head out the door. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, brothers and sisters, let's let's practice, shall we? Okay. Coming together in the quantum. So everyone who is here now and will be in the future and has been in the past. Come together as one. Coming really into the heart center. Heart center doesn't lie. Feel that purity, that truth, that divinity. And allow that diamond shining light of the crystalline Christ did, pure source consciousness. Just light up your field, diamond, golden, crystalline light. And allow it to kind of push back, dissolve any of the interference from the external or the, or the, the fray of what's going on right now and just truly feel your divine self. divine love, the divine light, the divine will, and the divine support of all that you are, all of your divine aspects, and of this oversoul group that's gathered here. All of us, hundreds of thousands of awakened ones who have fully embraced the path Purity, enough divine neutrality that you're not being swayed. Just allow everything to be forgiven, dissolved. Gratitude, a sense of light and humor, please, mm. for the illusion. Appreciation, a genuine appreciation that it's getting this crazy, that it's getting this wild. And then just feel back into the heart. Connect with all your brothers and sisters and just say, I am here. I am present. I am love and I have so much love, infinite love light and eternal support for everything that is going on, for every brother and sister incarnate, for the galactics, for the masters, for the angelics, for all of your guides, for everyone in service to the pure and true organic ascension. Thank you. In this now, use that strongest mastery skill of gratitude. Gratitude. Thank you. Let there be grace, light, compassion, patience, and divinity in all of our exchanges, all of our communication, really employing the next level of unity consciousness so that we can all see the divine light in one another, knowing that there's only one of us here and fully supporting the evolution and ascension of all the kingdoms, elementals, Gaia, humanity, all the different races, all the different beings, 
all of the different realms, leveling up, opening up into the new earth realms, the new earth experience, consistently walking in grace and compassion, humility and integrity, and our divine truth. Radiating that out through the collective, through all of creation. So it is. So it is. That was nice. <sighs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> all well, is well, beloveds. Keep getting mm, that message. Yeah. All is well. And I just want to thank you again for coming on and, you know, always being open to collaborating, but especially in this time that you've been taking for yourself. I really appreciate it because this is a very, very powerful day. Um, I knew it last night. I really knew it before that because I kept telling Morgan, you know, the last three years, January 11th has been huge. She goes, no, it's the 13th. <laughs> and then last night it hit me as I was preparing for the day. Uh, and when I woke up, and you know, I told you what happened. But yeah, so I really want to say thank you uh, for myself, from Sology, and for all of our brothers and sisters, and for everything that you do. And then until the next time, and you know, all blessings to you and yours. Blessings, everyone. Love you. Take care, Sandra. Thanks, brother. Bye bye.